My name is Keith Caldwell. We're in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm working on jobs with this recession in the African American community. Um, you know, this number came out that 10% unemployment, which is a horrible unemployment rate. We would love to have 10% unemployment. Unemployment in African American communities is 20%, and if it were indexed, it's probably around 25, 30%, with no end in sight. We know for any type of community to be stabilized, there has to be jobs, and that's what we're working on. We're working on green collar jobs with some of the stimulus package, attempting to um, get some of those funds to folks who have barriers to employment um, versus dislocated workers. So this is another category, folks who maybe had prison convictions, um, folks who don't have their GEDs, women who need um, child care, um, and that folks in, in that kind of pool. I come from that pool. Uh, I was born like number 10 of 11 children in public, we grew up in public housing, and we were poor even among public housing standards. So we knew that, it, it became really clear to me that poverty was violence in slow motion. And the systems and structures and institutions that were shutting down on us, that was creating this violent, atmosphere, that folks were responding to that violence. So I was just going about my business trying to figure out, I had um, kids at early age, so I was I had to, in the job market, and I, I was hitting dead-end jobs, and there was an opportunity I got to help bring a labor union in, and we saw the power of collective bargaining, we saw signing a memorandum of understanding how the the, um, the atmosphere of hostility toward workers changed immediately. And so I said, there's really something to this. But then I saw in labor, there was still, and here in the Southeast, um, this is a right to work state, which doesn't support rights or workers, so it's kind of a misnomer. But even the labor unions were kind of good old boy, kind of nudge, nudge, wink, keeping the ceiling from women and people of color from really rising to levels of leadership. So I said, well, because of com um, labor union organizing, kind of, I saw that I, I topped out. I went to community organizing, and that's working with people versus working for. So it's a, it's a model of justice versus this model of charity, and um, people can help solve their own problems. It's about me culturally being the same folks that I'm organizing. And so when we start talking about what the issues are, it's with, and so it's out of this collective, and there's no coming in this model like doing for, but it's doing with, and then people have this sense of power from the beginning. And so no matter what happens after that, they've been empowered to work on any issue because it's a community capacity building takes place through this campaign, and even any victory, how small we want to celebrate it as we continue to work because a lot of folks hadn't seen any victory whatsoever. And just to show that when we come together, we really have a lot of power. We're working on our schools just got resegregated in Nashville. So under this auspice of community uh, neighborhood schools and the neighborhoods in Nashville are as segregated as they were 40 years ago. And our concern is the allocation of resources because we know, as Brown versus Board tells us clearly, that um, black schools and minority schools never get what's adequate, never get enough. And so we're really concerned with that. That's one piece. We're working on living wage for the municipality. Um, Jerry is actually one of the chief uh, city council sponsors of that. Um, and we're also working with the cradle to prison pipeline, the overrepresentation of black and brown males in the criminal justice system. And we know that they're being steered. And so one of the largest entry points is public schools into that pipeline because um, prison beds are determined by fourth grade reading scores. So we have a really major concern around shutting some of those spigots so that that pipeline is non-existent. that they can do anything that needs to be done if they go back to community and, and create community. I think that 
at we as people of color, we, we've had a, an axiology that has been around our highest value being placed on relationships versus a highest value being placed on the acquisition of objects. And so we see that um, when we began to embrace that, that our culture became shattered. I mean, shattered in ways that 400 years of slavery couldn't have shattered it, that tried. I mean, the most heinous conditions of humankind's inhumanity to humankind, and we still survived that. But when we began to take on white middle class sensibilities in terms of this hyper capitalistic pull yourself up by your bootstraps individualism, that is where the destruction, in my opinion, lies. You know, the premium is on relationships, and I'm not for sale, and people know that. And, and people know that, we, you know, they've attempted to buy us off, and, and I live two blocks away from here, you know. I mean, so if, if I were to do anything against this community, I mean, I'm at the gas station. It's like, hey, Caldwell, I saw what you did. You know, it's like you have to answer. I have to answer to my people. And besides that, I have to shave, and I have to look in the mirror, and I would have to face myself. But what we, what we do is, because the relationships are so important, um, there are people that sometimes, you know, you get this phone call and you know you don't really have but three minutes. I say, and you say, okay, I, I have three minutes. And they appreciate you just hearing them out. And a lot of times it's my brother got locked up and, 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 I, and I'm not an attorney and I don't do that. You know, and it's like, but they just want someone to hear. And, and they know that I'm going to refer them to, like, legal aid or, or you know, or some, somewhere else, but they still want me to hear it, you know, and, and to acknowledge that I hear that and maybe when I see them again or even to call them back to ch check in on how that went. So that's the level of building relationships that if you make the call, then they'll go ahead and, and, and turn out because they know that it's about something meaningful. I'm thankful that... I'm alive, and I get to live to fight another day, um, because um, being in the throes of what that oppression is and what it means has given me an enormous sense of gratitude. So I'm, I'm just um, I'm delighted and honored that I have the privilege and opportunity to work with my community.